Hello. Am I audible? Good morning, Hi, sir. Yes, sir. Ah, sir. Yes, sir. Am I audible, sir? Yeah, audible. So, a uh, very warm good morning to all over present over here. Uh, I welcome all on the bay. Uh, <clears throat> I welcome you all from Centurion University of Technology and Management, which invites you for a webinar. It is in the series of faculty development program that is plan protection, current and future perspective. It will continue from today to 14th of June same timing, the speakers from all over the different states will deliver their messages for plant protection in different approaches. As we all agriculture peoples are very much concerned about the farmers and farmers are very much concerned about their plant protection. That is, they are only dealing with the pest and disease, which means they are very much concerned with this topic. So we are, we are speakers from different states which will deliver how to protect, how to conserve our plant health in different managements. I welcome different speakers which are present here. First of all, I would like to welcome Dr. Sandeep Patra, sir. He is scientist of uh, agricultural entomology, division of crop protection, ICR research complex for Northeast Himalayan region, Umiyam. Then I also welcome Dr. Biswajit Patra, sir, assistant professor, Department of Agricultural Entomology, Uttar Banga Krishi Vishwavitriyalya, West Bengal. Okay, sir. I also welcome Dr. Abhijit Ghatak, assistant professor, Department of Plant Pathology, Bihar Agricultural University, Sabor, Bihar. I welcome Dr. Shubrata Datta, Associate Professor, Department of Plant Pathology, Vidhan Chandra Krishi Vishwavidyalaya, West Bengal. I welcome Dr. Amalendu Ghosh, Senior Scientist, Entomology, Indian Agricultural Research Institute, Pusa, New Delhi. I welcome Professor Santanu Jha, Professor, Department of Agricultural Entomology, Vidhan Chandra Krishi Vishwavidyalaya, West Bengal. I welcome Professor Krishna Karmakar, head of the department, Chandra Krishi Vishwavidyalaya, West Bengal. I welcome our respected president, Professor Muktikanta Mishra, sir, Centurion University of Technology and Management, Odisha. I welcome our respected vice president, Professor Dian Rao, sir, Centurion University of Technology and Management. I welcome Professor Supriya Patnaik, ma'am, vice chancellor, Centurion University of Technology and Management. Then I welcome Professor Anita Patra, ma'am, Registrar, Centurion University of Technology and Management. Then I welcome Professor S.P. Nanda, sir, Dean Admin, M.S. Swaminathan School of Agriculture, Centurion University of Technology and Management. I welcome Professor Devendra Reddy, sir, Dean Academics, M.S. Swaminathan School of Agriculture, Centurion University of Technology and Management. I welcome Ms. Lipsa Das, Head, Department of Entomology, MS Swaminathan School of Agriculture, Centurion University of Technology and Management. I also welcome Dr. B. Praveen, Professor and Head, Department of Plant Pathology, MS Swaminathan School of Agriculture, Centurion University of Technology and Management, Odisha. Now I request and now I request our Dean Sir to please speak few words regarding this webinar. Yeah, good morning. Good morning to all of you and those who are present here and those who are attending the webinar on plant protection, current and future perspective. So indeed, it's a good opportunity for the faculty who are at the uh, verge of uh, uh, taking the uh, profession of teaching. In fact, uh, this program is uh, being organized by the departments of pathology, plant pathology and entomology jointly for four days with six speakers from different entomology as well as the pathology. 
and there are a few people ah. who have registered i hope hello. that they will be hello is there anything yeah so i i hope please that, continue sir yeah so there are six speakers spread over four days and they will be giving the insights into the latest trends of uh, plant production and what are the future perspectives so i uh, by this the many of the people who are attending this program will be knowing the latest trends and uh, in pest and disease management and there are few people registered and i hope that all the people will be attending the seminar i was told that uh, many people have registered but i have seen the number is less so i hope that they will be joining meanwhile and with this webinar uh, many will be having the idea how to how to improve and improving their knowledge in pest and disease management i wish that this webinar should be successful and it will be completing its uh, webinar in a good note and i thank all the speakers who are there for spread over i thank all the four uh, six speakers who are going to speak for the coming three days as well as today for accepting the invitation of centurion university and associate with this webinar of plant production and current and future perspective thank you and wish you all the success in completing this webinar thank you yeah uh, good morning everyone today i am very grateful to introduce our first speaker dr sandeep patra who is a renowned scientist of the, uh, agriculture entomology working in division of crop protection icr research in complex for northeastern hill region in umiyam barapani meghalaya india sir we are very grateful that you have taken uh, your be with, even in your busy schedule you have agreed to speak in this webinar sir will uh, i'll give this time to you sir to present to our faculty and also to our students sir sir over to you sir uh, okay okay i am starting so good morning to all of you uh, so uh, uh, is it audible to you hello yes sir it is audible sir okay so good morning to all of you and all uh, respected dignitaries present here and my dear participants and first of all i would thanks the organizer for giving the opportunity to lecture the deliver in this webinar so now i will uh, deliver my lecture on organic pest management so let us see why we can think that organic pest management so as we know that insect pest or uh, uh, in broad sense we can say that pest is the major limiting factor for achieving the targetable yield across the um, globe in all crops uh, including cereals pulse vegetable all these things so and if we see that globally every year 30% crop loss due to the different pest like diseases uh, insect weeds and other uh, non insect pest and uh, in indian condition every year uh, we are losing that about the 90000 crore uh, rupees uh, due to the crop losses if we see that from this uh, diagram that uh, sharing of the crop loss by different agent so uh, highest uh, crop loss uh, caused by the wheat and then followed by diseases then insect 23% and uh, storage green pest 10% and rodent 8% and other 6% so this is the uh, huge contribution by the different agent or different pest so if we see that uh, in vegetable crops and uh, different vegetable like tomato brinjal chilies okra and cabbage cucurbits everywhere that uh, crop loss due to the different insect pest is uh, somewhere that 20 to 30% somewhere more than 60% if we consider as the average the average uh, loss uh, due to the insect pest about the 40% so this is the huge uh, loss Uh, due to the only insect pest not of other pathogens so and 
for uh, controlling this one we are only using that uh, pesticide most common uh, management practice we are following and more reliable and pharmacists also choice uh, to uh, practice uh, through the um, uh, chemical use only so if we use that status of the pesticide use that and globally most of the pesticide use uh, as a herbicide about that 45% and then followed the, by insecticide 36% and fungicide 7% and other 2%. But in Indian scenario, it is a reverse. Uh, we are using more in uh, insecticide about the 60% and then um, fungicide 19% and followed by herbicide 16% and biopesticide only 3%. But now it slightly increase and about the 4% 4, 4 uh, of the total uh, use. So these are the use pattern of the pesticide. Like uh, in India, we are using the very less uh, about that 0.38 uh, AI kg per hectare as compared to the other country. Maximum is Taiwan and Japan and uh, and. Uh, if we see that uh, contribution, but uh, uh, crop which are uh, receiving that uh, pesticide load, the maximum is cotton. Uh, earlier, uh, the after introduction of the cotton, that pesticide uh, receive is the less, uh, but in uh, reduce. But again, that uh, resurgence of the different sucking pest, the cotton is receiving that uh, sizable amount of pesticide, and followed by paddy and then vegetable. So uh, therefore. Again, we are inviting the different problem using that pesticide use. And these are that uh, I am highlighting some few common uh, points of uh, present scenario of pest management and as well as pesticide use. And then again, we are inviting many problems like destruction of beneficial organism. When we are uh, using that conventional insecticide, they are killing all that natural enemies. And again, secondary or minor pest emerging as a major pest in different crops. So, uh, we have seen in many uh, crops in uh, cotton and uh, rice also in case of upar. And again, they are uh, developing the resistance in, uh, towards the different uh, pesticide group. So uh, well-known example is there the diamond bagmoth, heligoarpa, spodoptera. They are um, developing or already they developed that uh, pesticide resistance and towards that major group of conventional pesticides. Then a resurgence of treated paste, again, um, the, due to the excessive use of uh, pesticides, some uh, pest, uh, crop are uh, research as a major paste, or um, they are saying that they are outbreak like uh, BPH or sucking paste in cotton, uh, etc. And then pesticide residue in food chain, it is the major problem and it uh, directly uh, connected with our health issue also. And uh, when the, we are using that long um, residue, uh, uh, long uh, persistent pesticide or conventional pesticide, they are uh, coming uh, indirectly uh, to our body. And this is another major problem. And then environmental pollution. So when we are using, uh, it is uh, through that um, CPH or um, uh, diffusion, it is coming to the AR water bodies and uh, polluting the different uh, environmental uh, reservoir. And then ultimately all impact will come is the health disorder. So uh, this, this is the ill impact or ill effect of that pesticide use or only pesticidal management of insect pest. Apart from that, already we know some different um, harmful uh, story like uh, Bhopal strategies in 1984 and as well as that Indosalpan story in Kasodgod in in Kasodgod district of Kerala. And uh, recently in 2017 also, and many farmers uh, died uh, due to the mishandling of the pesticide in Maharashtra in 2017. So therefore, uh, we have to uh, shift in our pest management uh, in conventional management uh, through that insecticide to pest, uh, um, organic pest management. So these are indicate that we this is the time to convert or conversion from that uh, conventional pest management to that organic pest management. So let us see what are the options for organic pest management. So first of all, uh, I am telling to all you, this is the organic pest management is a great challenge. Uh, it, uh, we cannot control that insect pest uh, using only one single uh, management of some component. So it should start from the initial stage when we are growing the crop from starting from the land preparation to up to the maturity of the crop. So uh, uh, therefore we can employ it or uh, we can involve all these component of the IPM except that chemical control like cultural 
mechanical, physical, biological, botanical, microbial, and virusional approaches. So I have seen that some example of this component. So where uh, it will be very effective against some particular pairs. So now coming to that cultural practices or cultural component of that organic waste management. Uh, already we uh, doing all the uh, we are doing all this activity, but we have to think the what for we are doing and uh, this activity how help to suppress that insect pest like tillage. Uh, in simple plying uh, can uh, eliminate the number of insect pests uh, for the next uh, coming uh, crop season, like helicopter parmesan and several pieces of cardron. They are immature stages and uh, they are and pupa and staying in the soil. So if we plow, they expose to their predator or destroy. And uh, so thereby reducing that population uh, for the next season, like, like uh, grab of rice weed, hill, army worm in cereal crops, white grub, and PP of uh, hairy caterpillar, we can eliminate through that line. That, uh, that simple intervention can uh, help a lot for managing the insect pest. And like raking up or weighing of the soil. So we know the uh, fruit fly PP in case of vegetable and cucurbitaceous crop on fruit crop, and they are pupate in the soil. So uh, if we raking the soil and expose to their pupa to that natural predator, so their population will be less in the next cropping season. So likewise, that planting time is uh, play an important role to minimize the insect pest. Some uh, crops, like uh, if we sown the early in case of rice, uh, so we can uh, manage uh, or we can reduce that population of rice gallmage and leaf holder. And uh, in case of uh, sorghum and millets, uh, we can reduce that supply damage uh, by early sowing. And uh, same thing happening in case of groundnut for uh, white grub. If we shown in early as compared to the standard time of sowing, so uh, some uh, extent we can manage that insect pest. And in case of brassica crops, also we can uh, reduce that pest population uh, like mustard appeal. And in case of chickpea, uh, potbora damage is also managed through that early sowing. So next we coming to the seed rates also play a major role for controlling the mage product damage in mage and sorghum supply in sorghum. And pacing also play an important role for rice crop. If we give that broader pacing, so uh, incidence of the uh, hopper will be less or uh, and as well as leaf holder population and golmage population will also less. And if we give that closer pacing, their uh, hopper population, golmage and leaf holder population will be more. So we should consider that pacing in case of a rice crop. And um, in case of groundnut, it is reverse if we give that closer pacing. So we observe that the incidence of the thrips and jacid and lee minor will be reduced. And another crop rotation is another cultural practices. So always uh, cereal crops should be rotated with that and non um, uh, pulses crop. And so, uh, so for example, um, in case of groundnut, if we crop rotate with the non leguminous crop, so we minimize that the damage of the limb minor. Then intercropping is another option and good cultural practices for some, uh, for management of specific insect pest, like uh, if we intercrop the tomato with the cabbage, uh, we can easily uh, means manage uh, that diamond bagmoth. It is very notorious pest. So uh, many uh, uh, insect pest uh, uh, mean many pesticide uh, are failure to control this pest. So therefore, we can uh, reduce their population through that intervention of the different tactics and cultural tactics and other uh, tactics available with us. So tomato crop uh, uh, should be intercropped with cabbage so that uh, we can reduce that uh, diamond bag moth as well as uh, leaf weaver larvae on the cabbage. Then trap copy. So two trap crop is there, Marigold and Nicotiana. It is very much useful uh, for uh, trapping that helicopter parmesan. And nutri nutrient management. So all we know that uh, if uh, a level of nitrogen fertilizer is high in the crop, especially in rice crop, all insect pest uh, incidents will be more like yellow stembora, leaf holder, wall mage, and green leaf of our brown plant of our all maximum all insect pest will be low. So we use that judicious use of nitrogen fertilizer, particularly in case of rice for suppression of that uh, pest population. 
so now uh, coming to that another option and uh, physical component of that I, uh, I, ipm so now uh, if sun drying simple sun drying if we reduce the moisture content in the less than 10 percent so maximum stored grain paste uh, will be under check and disinfection of go down so instead of using that aluminium phosphide if we only heat that go down at the uh, at 50 to 70 percent so under this temperature no uh, pesticide no paste will be uh, alive so we can manage that stored grain paste and then refrigerator uh, cold storage of fruit and vegetables so reduce that many store um, many paste of vegetable who are coming from the field to up the store and then a use of light already um, or, or we know that that phototropic insect attack the light so we can use that technique for lepidopteran insect paste like hairy caterpillar stem borer of rice and another thing in uh, polypteran paste like uh, white grub also uh, collect through that installation of light trap so these are tactics we can use in sub, um, sequentially uh, for particular crop um, to managing the pest uh, without using that insecticide. Again, moisture, uh, already I told that uh, if moisture is less than 10%, so no infestation will be there in scope and pest. And you, sound is also uh, helpful for controlling the rat for like uh, ultrasonic sound is very much detrimental for uh, rat. So they will detect if we receive that sound. So now coming to that mechanical control. So mechanical control, uh, we can use that hand picking. Uh, some insect pests are there, they are uh, lay egg, uh, in very cluster, um, uh, in a cluster way, or uh, some larvae are also uh, live in congregate at a single point. So thereby in early stage, we can collect and destroy them so that uh, they cannot spread throughout the field. So uh, we can uh, check that uh, insect pest at uh, before uh, reaching that outbreak in that main field. So like rice tempera, so during um, uh, egg laying period, we can collect and destroy them, hairy caterpillar and various stages of epilegna betel also we can collect and uh, destroy them for uh, managing this insect pest. And like sick, uh, another uh, mechanical control is seeking. So uh, defoliating betel, we can shake and we can collect and destroy. It is uh, very much appropriate for that citrus tongue borer. Uh, citrus tongue borer, uh, stem borer, and they are uh, living in different branches. If in early morning we shake and uh, we can uh, collect uh, from that soil and destroy them, so we can manage in some extent uh, to that uh, only using the seeking. And another important uh, option for case one management, like dragging of the rope uh, to the rice field, uh, rice field. And for uh, stored grain paste, uh, we can use that sieving and winnowing. Even sieving, uh, uh, we can use that sieving and winnowing maximum stored grain paste. We can collect and destroy them, and uh, we can inhibit. We can inhibit or prevent them for uh, multiplication in that stored grain paste. And another important uh, tactics for mealybug uh, management in mango, like bending. Bending is very much useful for managing that millibar. If we uh, use that polythene seed uh, and bend that uh, mango uh, base, so they cannot crawl and cannot reach the target site, their target site in tip of that plant. So uh, thereby we are uh, preventing them to settle there and to mul further multiplication. So like uh, 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 for uh, army worm as well as grasshopper, we can use that trenching to prevent that uh, this pest uh, and managing to some extent. So next coming to that biological control, it is the more important component of uh, organic farming uh, or organic pest management. So different uh, natural enemies is there, but most important is the naturally occurring uh, the like ladybird beetle, uh, they are uh, feeding on all subbodies insect like a feed uh, or uh, millibug or uh, thrips, etc. And Chrysoperla carnea is also very potent uh, predators and they feeds on different subbodies insect like aphid, jacid, white plus, and millibug. So, uh, another important predator is their Cryptolemus montrogeri, and it is uh, uh, very much uh, useful against that millibug control. So likewise, parasitoid also explore for 
uh, organic waste management and very popular and well known parasite egg parasite is their trichogamma species different species is their chilonis trichogamma chilonis trichogamma japonica and they are very much uh, effective against that um, many leptoplant pests in uh, like helicobacter parmigera and different uh, borer complex in sugar can in uh, borer in, in uh, stem borer in rice and they are very much useful for biologically you know, control and then another uh, important parasite is the larval parasite and like uh, bacon inhibitor bacon inhibitor they are uh, very much effective against that larvae of leptoplan pest and especially silicor parmigera and other uh, borer pest in sugar cane or rice now i am coming to that botanical pest management so uh, universal botanical is the name so it is extensively used in different um, organic pest management uh, uh, practices and organic farming and they control the insect pest through that repellent and as well as too much poison and apart from that name the citrus oil is there they are also effective against that subbodies insect and mites and uh, garlic barrier or garlic extract also use and different uh, against that variety of insect pests in many um, in crop and uh, apart from this uh, botanical uh, another two three um, some botanical is there which are already available in market as a formulation uh, like uh, orange uh, pongemia uh, it is derived from pongemia pinata uh, anonin uh, anomus uh, anonin poamosa they are also effective against the different insect pest in many crops so now coming to that microbial and this is another important component for organic pest management and uh, it is already uh, available in market and different formulation like bacteria uh, among that bacteria bacillus thuringiensis is very effective against the many microbial pests like dpm tobacco caterpillar and cabbage caterpillar dairy caterpillar gum pod borer and gap, uh, gap, cabbage semilupar ginger foot and super and then uh, uh, virus also play an um, important role uh, against the many electrotoxin pest uh, uh, like npv new uh, nuclear polyhydrosis virus and as well as venous virus both virus are effective against the lepidoptran uh, helicobacter parmigera spodoptera lepida and uh, hairy caterpillar etc then coming to that fungus uh, this uh, pathogen is also we can explore uh, very extensively against uh, the different insect pests like viviria bashiana it is very much effective against the lepidoptran and polyptran pest then metargem anisably it is a very effective against uh, lepidoptran as well as other insect pest also and vaticinium locally they are very specific against the subbodies insect so these are microbial agent is there we can explore for uh, managing the insect pest under organic farming system so this is some bioresonal approach is there like pheromone technology and some well known pheromone is also there for gossip lure for control the pink bollworm hilly lure for control the american bollworm and for lucy lure and uh, for controlling that uh, brinjal shoot and footbor and other lure is also there for uh, in recently introduced invasive species like paul armium also lure is available we can use uh, this and for organic pest management then uh, among that insect attract and insect attract and methyl eugenin for uh, bacteria dorsalis uh, it is uh, it is uh, attract on different uh, fruit crops and like uh, another uh, fruit flies they are melon fruit fly they um, cause that extensive or uh, huge damage to the cucurbitaceous crop so we can use the only lure uh, like methyl eugenin cumulio and um, trimet lure is also useful for mediterranean fruit flies and then uh, if we come uh, consider that antivirin so among this antivirin only pyrethrum and azaritin as a available for use so now i am coming to that different challenges for organic pest management so uh, we cannot uh, manage uh, organically and everywhere some uh, important factor is there we should consider when we are going for that organic pest management like an organic grower need to understand the pest and beneficial organism that usually occur in that crop so if you don't have that idea of which is the insect pest and which is the predator and they are occurring stage so they may be confusing and they can kill through that uh, other um, option of pest management so this would properly understand and organic grower need to have the biological ecological and behavioral knowledge about the pest and natural enemy uh, we have seen that many farmer asks when that 
uh, boxinellid beetle grub feed on that and they are uh, found in their field. So they think that they are, it is the paste also. So that's why they uh, should have idea the which uh, stage is the predatory stage and which is the natural enemies or they are um, some biological behavior uh, so that they can uh, successfully use this natural enemy, their uh, organic farming. And another important factor is that timely adoption of appropriate management practices. So uh, uh, already I told that it is that uh, integrated approach, all uh, component uh, except that chemical control. And we cannot manage this insect pet only using that any single component suddenly when uh, uh, insect pest reaches their severe stage or insect pest already outbreak. It is very difficult, but that's why we should and uh, adopt all this uh, management uh, by appropriate management option in each and every step from during the swaying. If, suppose if I consider for mage crop and when we are swaying, we uh, think that if supply is there, we, uh, use, we should use that high seed rate so that we can clean and we can reduce that waste load and we can maintain that um, our target uh, plant population. And then again, they are in advancing stage. They, they may attack by that. Uh, they can attack by chylopartellas, uh, that stem borer. So that time they can release the tychogoma chilonis. And then again, they can attack at the silking stage by that uh, cob borer. So they can use that BT formulation. So this is that another important. So timely adoption is another important, uh, important option for organic pest management. And last, but it is very much important and crucial uh, um, uh, con factor uh, for organic management practices that supply or availability of biopesticide and biogen. Because uh, many places it is not easily available. So another uh, important thing is their quality of biopesticide because we know that biopesticide uh, shelf life is very short. So therefore, if it is available in locally or district wise, so they can uh, use uh, in uh, very uh, uh, very effectively. Otherwise, some problem may be there, and we cannot get that efficacy uh, our expectation level. So these are some challenges for organic pest management. So now I am coming to that some insect pest in northeastern region. So I as I am working in here, so uh, I am uh, explaining to you. Uh, before you for some insect paste in northeastern region. So uh, insect paste of rice, rice is the major crop here, rice and maize. So here uh, we found that white crop and leaf holder rice is and rice timber is the major uh, important uh, major paste of rice. So these are that white crop uh, when uh, they cause that damage by feeding on the roofs and causing severe damage, particularly in upland rice and resulting into the low yield. So how we can it organically? So we, how we can manage that organically? So uh, for uh, managing this space, we should use that uh, well decomposed FYM. Another thing is uh, that uh, microbial pesticide like metargium or bufaria uh, um, in which soil we can apply uh, five gram per kg of soil. And if you spread that 200 kg of soil in which with that metargium or bufaria and uh, per hectare, so it will be very effective for managing the insect waste. So this is that stem borer uh, damage in rice. Uh, the stem borer caused that damage in two stages, at early stage, um, dead heart, and uh, the later stage in panic and instance, you know, white air head. And this is that uh, leaf holder damage. Uh, it, it, uh, that this also uh, becomes sometimes very severe in rice crop here. And rice case one is also a um, uh, major pest in Northeastern region, but it uh, not regular is sporadically it caused the major damage. And now we can manage all these leptocron pests through that organic means only. The trichogoma pests, they attack the eggs of many leptocron insect pests like rice tempera, leaf holder, etc. So it has been found that the seven to nine releases of trichogoma chilonis, then trichogoma japonicum at the rate of one lakh per hectare at weekly interval, starting from 30 days after transplanting, proved as effective as standard insecticide treatment for the control of stem borer and leaf holder in rice field. And another um, for plant hooper, we can use that merit bug at the rate of 100 bucks or 50 to 75 eggs per meter square at 10 days interval will be very effective against that hopper management in rice. So these are some natural uh, enemies uh, we should conserve in rice ecosystem uh, by avoiding that spraying of chemical insecticide like 
stain uh, stain of break on species or uh, potassia fibibase and janthopimla all these are uh, natural enemies for controlling that stem borer and leaf borer so these are some um, coccinellic beetle also some menochilas and harmonia they feeds on that uh, eggs of leaf hopper and different hopper population in rice and then another important predator for controlling that uh, leaf hopper particularly plant hopper and uh, in a citronimus lividipendens they are very effective for man, uh, um, uh, natural control for plant hopper uh, in rice paste and another some in a naturally occurring some dragon uh, damsel fly and uh, dragon fly they can play an important role for suppressing insect pest in the rice and uh, some it cases also there we can incorporate for managing that insect pest uh, for avoiding that pesticide or for organic management so this is already practiced in uh, northeastern region for leaf lolan management they use that cut uh, bamboo shoot in the pieces and spray in rice field after soaking in water in overnight and then well fermented wine pomes uh, also they use for uh, managing that uh, leaf roller in rice and for managing gandhi bug they use that dead frog or pep or place on the top of the stick and sometimes pharmacists also use that uh, salted fish with its stick uh, for attracting that gandhi bug and then stem borer management some important uh, it case is there suppose, suppose uh, decoction of neem ext uh, neem actually extraction of the neem they use uh, for managing the stem borer and keeping the slice of pumelo uh, in the uh, paddy field uh, at the rate of 1 trap per 6 meter square area and they also place the chop leaf of indian uh, rhododendron uh, for controlling the stem borer and another two it case is they are placing a few branches of fern in the rice field and placing the citrus seeds in the rice field at the rate of one trap per 6 meter square these are it case available for rice timber management in northeastern region and then i'm coming to that uh, controlling the rice case one to it case and uh, they, uh, they uh, use that rope and deep in calcinized uh, calcin oil and start in that water in the rice field and another it case is they are spreading of frog cow dung in that field water then coming to that insect pest of mage and it in a, a major insect pest is that uh, mage stem borer so they are also in early stage they uh, attack on the leaf and make a short hole and when that uh, 30 to 40 days old they cause that uh, um, dead heart in the rice so how we can manage already i discuss uh, when i was giving that example in mage we can use the trichogoma chilonis at the rate of 2 lakh 50000 egg per hectare and it should be coincide during the egg laying period so three releases at weekly interval will be effective and also we can use that bt formulation as a microbial pesticide at the 2 g per liter of water so now we coming to that another important pest of northeastern region that cob borer stenophora elongella actually this pest is very much confined this northeastern region only and megala we can find this pest and other part cob is attacked by the thilga or parmigiana but not this pest so these are attack uh, at silking stage and um, feeding by boring and making that um, gallery on the um, inside that cob and um, make the unfit for human consumption so therefore they are uh, causing that total economic losses in the mage so now how we can manage uh, that Uh, for cultural practices we can use that burning of the crop residues to destroy the overwintering stage to help the reduce the interest in next season because uh, they are uh, they uh, pupate on that uh, um, strabel uh, or um, uh, different as uh, within that uh, silk uh, within that uh, crop residue so that's why we uh, should burn all this uh, crop residue uh, before the next season and deep flying during that march april also will be helpful Uh, to expose that immature stages to their predators and early showing is effective against this case uh, generally here that um, may shown in end of the april to uh, astic of may but if we shown in march uh, and within that april so reduce that cobra infestation some sorghum varieties can use as a trap trap crop like is2312 and dbs1 can be grown as a trap crop for this case and we use that bio pesticide uh, for uh, after uh, infestation or population is not managed by this uh, other in sorghum
seven practices, then BT at the rate of, for example, data will be just fall armyum. And it is very notorious and devastating case on match and it introduced in 2018 in India. And then within 2019, uh, it, uh, and it is 2019 spread across the country and they are causing extensively in the match. So these are some photographs in our field also. So these are that identification. We can identify this paste by seeing that in four dark spot and eight abdominal segment and some y shaped structure in interior head. Then how we can manage already government of India uh, release one uh, recommendation for controlling this paste. So I'm coming for this uh, management practices like cultural measure, deep line is very much effective against this space. That intercropping with mage, PGNP and black gram uh, also uh, recommended to reduce this space population and cultivation of mage hybrid with tight hugs cover will reduce this fall armyum damage. Then uh, some mechanical control is also there hand picking of immature stages. And another most important mechanical control, so it is very much effective also already we have tested here, the application of dry sand into the whole of affected match plant and uh, after uh, initiation of the fall armyum damage uh, will be very much effective. It requires we can uh, repeat uh, the two second time application after 15 to 20 days of first application. And then must, uh, for mass timing, we can use that tremont at the rate of 5 per acre. Now coming to that biocontrol bio, bio, bio or biological option for management of fall armyum. So augmentative release of trichogamma, putiosum or telinomas, hemas at the rate of 50,000 per acre at weekly interval uh, will be effective against this pest. If we come in, in, um, consider for biopesticide, only two biopesticides very much effective, metargia manusably at the rate of 5 gram per liter of, um, liter of water and another uh, Roman uh, no urea really at the rate of uh, three gram per liter of water. And so it will be effective and, and uh, that two, two to three spray will be required at 10 days interval. And BT formulation also very much effective against this space. Uh, we can use that two gram per liter uh, for management of this insect paste. So now coming to that as uh, another some important vegetable like uh, whole tops. So, these are the um, major insect pests. This is that uh, cabbage butterfly, and they cause uh, like grazing. And so, all our uh, pictures showing that adult uh, egg and larvae and larvae are very much congregated, and then uh, later in storm, then spread throughout the field and cause um, grazing uh, means they cause extensively damage on the cabbage. So how we can manage this pest and uh, without insecticide? So hand picking and another option in early stage, we can reduce that population uh, some uh, if uh, properly. Uh, we observe our field at uh, that lower surface of the leaf because uh, the leaf are uh, that uh, egg laying behavior is in clustering way. So we can collect easily and destroy them. And then early stage larvae also we um, collect and destroy them to uh, reduce their population. And we can encourage that activity of the natural parasitoid like uh, potassia, glomeratus, and hypocita terribinis. And hypocita is very much effective against this case uh, and larval. And uh, spraying, of, uh, spraying the crop with neem oil and Bt alternately is very effective for this uh, management of this insect phase. Then coming to that another notorious pest of cabbage like diamond bagmot. So these are the damage symptoms. So if it's some an outbreak, so all in, in, in cabbage will be unfit for uh, market, marketable or human consumption. So uh, we can use through that intercropping. So mustard can be intercropped with that uh, cabbage and mustard. Uh, we can intercrop and one two is to one. So and um, yeah, mustard should be grown at least 10 days ahead of planting of the main crop like cabbage. And as the first, as they prefer that mustard, so major pest population is attacked toward the mustard and uh, we can destroy uh, using that insecticide. So uh, we using that insecticide, only that trap crop or as mustard, but not in main crop. And another crop rotation with cucurbits, beans, peas, tomato, melon will be effective against this. Uh, based or against the outbreak of this space. Then again, conservation of natural enemy, another important factor for this space like uh, diadigma and scotasia, lupella, speed flies is also uh, very um, important natural enemies for suppression of this 
uh, based in cabbage. And another important biopesticide for managing this space is Bacillus thuringiensis. Uh, because maximum uh, pesticide is al uh, already uh, resistant, they develop resistant to, uh, towards the all uh, group of pesticides. So that's why we can use that Bt effectively against this insect pest. Now, another important um, crop is here in tomato. Tomato food borer. So these are that, uh, uh, it is uh, not only here, it is throughout the India problem problem that helicopter parmigera and nowadays another important uh, problem came here in uh, tuta absolota an american pilum they are also causing extensively damage on the tomato so um, we can manage this insect pest through intercropping of uh, intercropping of tomato with that marigold because marigold is very much uh, attractive and for helicopter parmigera, but planting of marigold should be in such a way so that the tomato flowering coincides with the tight bud stage of the marigold because tight bud stage is very much preferable to that helicopter parmigera larvae. So, and another uh, cultural practice we can follow growing of eight rows of sorghum as a border crop around that field at 30 centimeter into 10 centimeter facing promotes the natural predator like trisopala and coccinelli. So, and Deep flying is also effective already in, during cultural practice. I told that deep flying also helpful for insect pests. So uh, they can expose their um, natural predators to reduce their population. And another pheromone technology, it is very useful against this space. We can use the boat trap per acre for monitoring this space. And as a direct in, it is that universal pesticide. And we can use that two to three ml per liter of water for controlling this insect pest. And some specific NPVs also they are helicopter PCG NPV at the rate of 250 larval equivalent per liter. And Bacillus thuringiensis at the rate of two gram per liter will be very much effective against this insect pest. And um, biocontrol agent like Mycogoma chilonis is also used at the rate of 50,000 egg per hectare at six times at regular interval for management of this insect. Now coming to the tomato limb miner. So these are uh, causing uh, in uh, they causing that leaf damage and sometimes drying and leaf withering and drying is also there and uh, in, was that uh, ill losses and very large quantity. And how, can, how we can manage this pest? So remove the alternate host uh, at maximum um, uh, wheat host. We can remove uh, surroundings from, uh, from the uh, surroundings field. And prior to um, uh, transplanting, we can use that install, that sticky strap, so that we can collect and we can uh, um, kill some adult of that uh, adult of uh, Lim minor and another parasitic works like uh, Draconidae or uh, Eulopidae uh, or uh, Tyromelidae are the important natural control. And uh, in the absence of this insecticide, uh, they keep this insect at low level of abundance in tomato. Then white flies, another important uh, insect based in um, uh, tomato, they cause that uh, tomato lip curl disease also and causing uh, sometimes that reswing is also required in early stages if they are outbreak. Then uh, we can uh, manage this insect pest also some uh, organic means some um, uh, um, means Vaticinium lecalin, we can use this and another we can use that um, sticky strap or uh, some resistant variety we can use against this pest. So now coming to that insect pest of ginger. So two important insect pest is there in ginger food subora. It is the very much destructive pest in ginger and occur throughout the world and as well in India also everywhere it is like that. And uh, ginger stem is occasionally also cause damage to this ginger. So we uh, also uh, adopted that organic management practices. Uh, Binjal food sudubra, stembara, as well as uh, for other uh, minor pest also like hartabitil or uh, um, uh, um, other uh, uh, thieves or uh, epic uh, like that. So collect and destroy all this infested shoot and fruit at regular interval is effective and avoid the monocropping. If we grow only brinjal, binjal, their population will be more in next coming season. So we should alternate. And then intercropping with the coriander and funnel as a single yeah. row or double cropping uh, system. Uh, and growing that yeah. resistance. And growing that resistant varieties will be also effective for um, managing this insect pest. And retum crop should be avoided for stem borer control. And collection and destruction of egg masses like larva and adult of hartabitil 
can be managed by uh, mass collection and pheromone trap installed at the rate of 5 per 0.4 hectare uh, will be effective against the additional organelles. And installation of delta trap or yellow sticky trap will be effective for white fly control in brinjal and periodic release of trichogoma chilonis at the rate of 1 lakh per hectare will be effective against this uh, brinjal food shoot borer. And spraying of Bt formulation uh, also uh, promising biopesticide against that brinjal food shoot borer. And naturally occurring parasitoid like uh, Brethella or uh, Goryphus will be uh, very much active against this space. And predator like coccinellid are effective against somebody's insect in brinjal ecosystem. And uh, also we can spray that neem seed canal extract at the 5% uh, against the epid or other certain pests. So these are the uh, organic management option is there we can adopt for managing that different insect pest in the brinjal. So these are that some common uh, crop in northeastern region and their insect pests and their organic management practices. And uh, in broad sense, already I discussed different option, cultural, mechanical, botanical, or uh, uh, rational or microbial. So all these uh, option uh, we can use uh, sequentially for particular crop and against the particular pace. So this is all about that organic pace management. So thank you to all. Thank you very much, sir, for such a very informative presentation on uh, pest management strategies using organic methods. So now we will move on to uh, question round. If any participants is having any questions, can you please ask to the speaker, sir? Oh, I'll ask Deepa and sir to present some of the questions also. Hello. Uh, good morning, sir. Uh, good morning, all the participants. Uh, and I am thinking, uh, thank you, sir. Uh, thank you for your informative uh, this uh, deliberation. And we uh, learn so many things uh, from you. Uh, so I would like to request uh, any other participants uh, for any queries uh, or else some questions we got from the chat box. Uh, uh, so, uh, sir, hello, sir. Yes, yes. Uh, uh, sir, some uh, three queries are there, sir, uh, from uh, our uh, soil science department. So, Oro Burman sir has asked. Uh, what is, uh, first is, sir, uh, he wanted to know what is the production level of biopesticide in India? Uh, he wanted to know, sir. Uh, yeah, actually, uh, production level already we um, in India, they are started, but exactly data I cannot say. But earlier it was very less, less than 1%. But year after year, it is increasing. So now almost about that 4% of the total pesticide used in India is biopesticide. And our different organization is there, uh, Indian Institute of, uh, National Bureau of Organ, uh, Important Insect Pest, uh, then Bangalore, they are producing uh, different uh, biopesticide and different uh, companies is also there in South India based company and Maharashtra based <laughs> company, they are using that biopesticide. But uh, in if you consider uh, but compare with that chemical pesticide, it is very difficult to get. But uh, gradually it is increasing day by day. But we cannot change or we cannot uh, supply that biopesticide uh, like a pesticide uh, to that all uh, farmer of the India. But it is gradually increasing. I am telling to you. And uh, we cannot convert all that farming system as organic. For this one, we need some. Pro uh, um, policy. So some particular area we can convert uh, for organic uh, farming. So like uh, in the northeastern region. So uh, uh, by default they are organic and by uh, we can alternatively say that by wisdom of the farmer, this is the uh, organic zone. So pesticide use is very less. So we can convert or we can practice or we can adopt that management practices for uh, growing that uh, uh, organic produce. Hello. Hello. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, thank you, sir, for this information. Uh, sir, one more query is there. Yes. Uh, that is, how efficient is the biopesticides in case of organic farming? If you go for organic farming. Yeah, actually, already during my discussion, I told na, that in uh, APKC, you cannot 
uh, measure that single step because when you are uh, start that organic farming in start from your sowing time so each and every step you have to take care so that insect pest cannot uh, 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 reach at their outbreak stage or severe stage that time you cannot control uh, that uh, use of single by pesticide like neem or uh, microbial pesticide so that time your crop will be lost so that's why you have to need the plan the how we can uh, manage our pest in particular crop and uh, you have to uh, you should have knowledge the what are the insect pest uh, major pest and which stage they can attack according to that way you have to prepare okay sir yes sir thank you sir uh, sir one more query is there uh, that is uh, uh, please share some of the reliable sources for procurement of this bio pesticides for organic farming uh, actually uh, we cannot uh, recommend the any company name na we cannot say but uh, in um, the market na you it is available in some hyderabad also some companies there are some maharashtra some companies there uh, you can see in some different uh, uh, means website you can search that by pesticide company you can find but we cannot recommend to any uh, company names they search from there you can purchase and you can get so No, we cannot uh, say in uh, here na. It is some limitation is there for us. Uh, yes, sir. I and from, and uh, another thing I am telling to you from different uh, government organization, I can say suppose Bangalore, uh, Bangalore I I H R is there. There are some uh, uh, scientists working on uh, different pheromone technology and some uh, uh, national bureau of uh, agricultural important insect. Uh, uh, is there uh, icr organization you can get and from uh, iri also some uh, microorganism in, uh, institute is there in uh, bangalore from, you can contact with them so they can uh, can say that uh, availability of that pesticide that pesticide uh yes sir uh, thank you sir uh sir uh, any other one... participants uh, is having any queries you can please ask to speak up now Sir, uh, actually, uh, I am from Department of Agronomy, Dr. Tanmay Shankar. Sir, uh, as your presentation was very nice, uh, so I just want to know one thing, sir. As uh, our this area, which is in South Odisha condition, mostly the maize cultivation is uh, going on, and there is a very uh, means uh, like uh, devastating pest. Uh, you can say that is uh, fall army worm. so what is the control measures we can take and after giving so many type of pesticide they are attacking uh, regularly what should be the measure yeah hey, already i discussed the different management option of fall army worm and but farmers are using only pesticide and thereby again they are creating problem because fall army worm it is the new introduced pest but within uh, one or two year again they develop the resistant again the many insect pest so that's why uh, uh, that available option with us suppose we use that sand application and dry sand if we uh, apply and hold uh, after initiation of the pest so their physical aberration will be there and they uh, can, uh, cannot damage further and uh, along with that and uh, with that mechanical control we can use some bio control suppose metargem any supply is there some bt is there and sequentially we can use 10 days interval so that their population will be reduced and another thing is there Uh, we cannot manage by eradicate hundred percent. We can manage in we can reduce their pest damage. And after uh, certain uh, time that uh, they recover, if your infestation is uh, less, they automatically recover. And and another thing is there are many natural bio control is identified from the northeastern region also. Naturally, they manage uh, this uh, different. Suppose larval parasitoid, pupal parasitoid is there. So directly we cannot see on farmers uh, cannot see that impact, but their population will be checked if you use that organic management practices. But problem is that we cannot control that farmers. Uh, to, uh, uh, we cannot prevent the farmer to spray the insecticide. Now, but organically uh, some option is there. We can adopt this for managing this insecticide. so sbt metargem the uh, humania really 
or send application and trichogamma chiloni and you can contact different state uh, agriculture university there by control laboratory will be there and uh, you can link up the farmer to that by control laboratory they can collect from that uh, trichogamma chiloni and install their uh, match field thank you sir thank you for your information oh. uh, hello sir uh sir actually our uh, webinar is also streaming on youtube so from that we got some questions sir uh someone has asked uh, that why in our country insecticides uh, have more use as compared to herbicides someone has asked onesha pradhan yeah, actually uh, insecticide uh, insect pest uh, damage is uh, more na every uh, year annually we are losing about that 90000 crore rupees annually so these are the huge damage to the crop production so that's why our main focus is that uh, manage that insect pest so uh, for therefore using that uh, extensively use that uh, insecticide as compared to the herbicide right. herbicide also uh, and, uh, means uh, weed is also damaging that uh, crop but it is indirect damage and ppa farmers is not aware so uh, for getting that uh, proper answer um, uh, one agronomist is also with me i can hand over uh, him okay doctor can i answer sir hello sir sir you can answer sir actually if you see the condition of indian condition also the total weed the total damage by crops is uh, higher for the weeds but in india what is the things we most of the farmers are very small and marginal and they may only dependent on the manual labor so they can think they can manage the weed by manually or by hand or any other means and that damage directly they are not visible suppose there is suppose 20% or 30% or 15% damage so farmers is not getting the direct but in case of insect products suppose fruit and fruit borer or in case of fall army war the the crop damage up to visible. 80 or 90% so it is visible very high aspect so they cannot control at that time but if we go to, go to the other countries in the just usa and other things where manual labor is very limited and everything is by the system the herbicide use is more as compared to the pesticides so got your answer thank you very much sir yes sir thank you sir yes sir okay sir thank you very much sir for your such a beautiful and informative deliberation i know it was very difficult for you to kind of uh, for presenting here in instead you took time uh, because of uh, internet connections and everything thank you very much sir you are very grateful to you for presenting uh, in this webinar okay. on behalf of department of entomology and plant pathology of central university we are grateful to you sir thank you very much sir okay thank you very much Okay. We are going to end the webinar now. So I'll thank all the participants for attending this webinar. Tomorrow we'll be uh, having two webinars uh, on uh, 11:30. So please join following the same link. Thank you very much. Good day to you.